Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is ponder. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we use this verb. The first way you're likely to hear ponder used is to mean to think about something carefully. And this careful thought is generally done before one makes a decision or reaches some type of conclusion. A second way you might hear ponder used is to mean to reflect on something. So with this second definition, I would um, still consider this to be sort of deep thought, maybe just without the decision or um, uh, reaching some type of conclusion. <clears throat> You should know that ponder is a regular verb. To make the progressive tense, all we need to do is add ing to form pondering. The past tense and participle forms of this verb are made by adding ed. Our base verb, ponder, er, ends in a voiced r sound. So our past tense ending is going to make a d sound. And we're not adding an extra syllable here. It should sound like this pondered, pondered. Now, I do have a few phrasal verbs for us to look at, but if you're looking at the notes on my screen, you can tell that ponder about, ponder on, and ponder over all have the same meaning. And all of these relate back to those definitions we looked at just a moment ago. So we're thinking about something very carefully. And, and that careful thought is occurring over some period of time. So as we use this verb ponder, right, we don't really imply for someone just to think about something for a few seconds or maybe even a minute. Right? We're, we're talking about kind of a longer period of time to, for one to really think about something carefully. So a few example sentences um, that I have here all use the modal should, so we're giving advice. One uh, example is we shouldn't ponder about this question for too long. Right? So here, uh, someone might be giving this advice to say, eventually we need to reach a conclusion or make a decision. A second example sentence, we should ponder on ways to keep our students safe. Okay. This is something that teachers and administrators might be saying uh, in meetings as they think about how to keep kids healthy in schools uh, during our ongoing pandemic. A third example, we should ponder over his words. So uh, again, all of these examples we're talking about thinking some uh, thinking about something very carefully. So in the first example, a question. Uh, second, our topic here of keeping students safe. And then the third, someone's words. Something, maybe information they shared, or maybe it's other advice they've given. Let's continue using our verb of the day, ponder, and a couple different verb tenses. Today, we're gonna practice the present progressive, Sometimes books and teachers will call this the present continuous. They mean the same thing. And then the second tense we're going to practice is the present perfect progressive. And again, you might hear this called the present perfect continuous. They mean the same thing. Let's start with the present progressive. To make this verb tense, we need two parts. We need a present form of be, and then we need the ing form of our verb. Um, and that's how we're going to make an affirmative sentence. And we're using this verb tense to talk about something that's happening right now or something that is in progress. An example here. Companies are pondering requiring a booster shot for employees. Okay? So here they're thinking over having this particular requirement. Now, if you want to make a negative present progressive sentence, then you need to insert not after your be verb. Another example, she isn't pondering what to do next. Finally, you can make a yes or no question in the present progressive. To do that, you're going to start with your present form of be, then you'll have your subject, and then the ing form of the verb. Here's another example. Is the restaurant pondering changing its hours? Right? So, all of this implies this is ongoing thought, something that's that's happening now. Now let's take a look at the present perfect progressive. So in the present progressive, we had two Ps. We need 
two parts. But in the present perfect progressive, we have three Ps. We're going to need three parts to make the affirmative. And to do that, we're going to start with have or has, whichever form matches our subject. Then we're going to use the participle been, B-E-E-N, and then the I-N-G form of the verb. Okay. Here's another uh, affirmative example. He's been pondering retirement for the last few years. So sometimes I've had students before ask about, well, when should I use this? And I always think about some actions starting in the past and continuing into the present. And um, that's a bit similar. You might hear me use that same explanation with the present perfect. But anytime we're really wanting to focus on something that's not completed quite yet, uh, or focus on how long something's taking, taken, uh, then using the present perfect progressive is a good choice. Another uh, form you might hear is the negative. Right? So again, we'll start with have or has, depending on what our subject is. Then we're going to use not, then our participle been, and then the ing form of the verb. I haven't been pondering when life will return to normal. Right? So here someone is saying uh, this, this isn't an, an action that I've started in the past and continuing in the present. Uh, and many people do ponder this, right? When will it be safe for me to start doing things I used to do in 2019 or early 2020? Uh, and some, some think it's just better not to think about that at all. <laughs> Lastly, let's look at making a yes or no question in the present perfect progressive. To do that, we'll start with have or has, then we'll have our subject, then been, then the ing form of the verb. Here's another example. Have you been pondering changing jobs? Okay, so someone wants to know, or have you been thinking about this deeply or carefully? Now, one thing I want to point out to you is um, after this verb ponder, what you saw in a few different examples here is a gerund form. And so this is one of those verbs where we're always going to use uh, gerunds if we want to describe an activity. So I, I'm going to point out for you here in my first uh, sentence, requiring, that was a gerund. Uh, changing, also another gerund. Uh, and changing again here. So very common to see that you're not going to see the infinitive. That's the to plus the base verb. So we would not say companies are pondering to require. Not going to happen. Always going to use the gerund. Now let's take a moment to look at some words that are related to our verb. The first is the noun ponderer. So uh, that extra er suffix there is telling this. This is a person who ponders, or uh, some might call it a contemplative thinker, a deep thinker. An example here, she's a freelance writer, photographer, and ponderer. Right? So somebody who thinks quite deeply. Another related word you might encounter as you read is the adjective ponderable. This uh, means that something is considerable enough that we can weigh it or assess it, think about it, consider it. An example here, that question may be unanswerable, but it's certainly ponderable. So uh, it's important enough for us to consider it. We might not reach an answer, and that's okay sometimes. The last word I'm going to leave you with is the adjective imponderable. So now I've added the prefix I am. This generally means not. So we're essentially kind of turning uh, the second adjective on its head there. And now we have difficult or impossible to estimate, assess, or answer. An example of this, all the COVID-19 deaths from around the world can seem imponderable. Uh, I encountered this word um, and, and a sentence pretty close to this once um, as I was reading in the last few weeks. Um, and it is sort of hard sometimes for me to wrap my head around how many people have been affected, um, not only here in the United States, but around the world. So I want to take just one quick moment to say thanks to Robert, uh, one of the viewers and subscribers who requested this verb. And I want to encourage other people who are watching this video uh, to think about other verbs they'd like to see me discuss in the future. I really appreciate you watching, and I hope you have a great day.